the Justin Robert Young podcast brought to you as always by everybody who supports us at payjurydaily.com. Now we're talking about how we support the show. Oh, what do you say we just do the damn thing? Gentlemen, welcome back. 2019 has begun, and so has the Jury Daily Podcast. Uh, my name is Justin Robert Young. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Joining me today, got a little guest here live in the studio, my co-creator on The Contender and Action News, John Teasdale. How you doing, buddy? Thanks, Justin. Uh, I'm doing great. You know, new year, the... Looks 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 awesome so far. Yeah, so far so good. So far so good. There, let's say there's a lot of inertia coming into the new year. On there a is lot of fronts. There is definitely a lot of inertia, and uh, uh, you know, I'll tell you what, we're gonna start things off the right way, which is by talking about a video that was popular uh, a few weeks ago, <laughs> because I never really got a chance to talk about it here, but I would like to do so. It's really hard to let let 2018 go. It is. It is. Uh, uh, this is the the glitter bomb video. Uh, uh, so, John, we just watched it um, before we went live, but I wanted to get your opinion on it. What what was what was your opinion on the glitter bomb video? Before we get into any controversy about it, oh, there's controversy. There is. Ooh. There is. There is controversy about this video. Uh, well, I thought uh, a couple things while I was watching it. One, uh, I thought that it was very well put together. He said it was like this first prank video, but it like hit all of the big points, right? It had the story about him being the, the victim of something that most people can identify with, which yep. is getting a package stolen. I've certainly had this happen to me. Uh, yeah. In San Francisco. John actually also used to live on what was later designated officially as the most dangerous block of San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, therefore, the country, probably. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, but it, it certainly has that. It certainly has a lot of visceral appeal for me in the same way that, like, the, the like, prank bikes. Or not the prank. What, what do you call them? The fake prop i don't know he called it he called it something specific yeah where uh it was a trap a trap bike for like people who steal bikes yeah and then end up getting flipped over the handlebars because as someone who bikes a lot as someone who gets packages delivered to my doorstep or would like to if i could i like seeing you feel you get their come you feel a uh, righteous anger against yeah. this specific crime exactly gotcha so it it was very well put together for that uh i certainly I certainly felt the the vindication that I think I was supposed to feel uh, watching this video that it was set up for. Yeah, and uh, short of violence, right? Yeah, it was glitter. Like it was, it was just a hey, let me. Uh, right, it wasn't the bike that like electrocutes you and then runs you over. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. And it's like, oh, you stole my bike. <laughs> you deserve to have your br legs broken, you <laughs> piece of shit. Exactly. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't that. It was kind of like a. Hey, you're covered in glitter now. Like, I'm Tobias Fuke. Yeah, the Tobias Fuke of uh, of revenge pranks. So, so yeah, that was one thing I was thinking. The other thing was like, ah, I'm not really sure if this is legal or not. Yeah. Uh, the third thing was like, I I appreciated the engineering work that went into it. Like, the engineering's he, amazing. He did a lot. Like there was a lot of work that goes into something like that, and I was thinking, man. You could kickstart this. <laughs> yeah. No, you could you could you could do a lot with that. All right. Did any of it seem inauthentic? Um not on first watch. Okay. Cause here is the controversy. Okay. Uh uh Robert, the video, the version that we watched, uh had about two minutes, or sorry, about a minute and a half taken out of it. Because okay. he says that there were some of the uh, people in the video 
that like he had placed them on a friend's porch and the friend had a few of his friends steal the packages just to make sure that he got reactions. And so some of the reactions in the video that were removed by the time that we watched it were proven to be by Mark Rober and his friend confessing inauthentic. They were they were friends of this other guy's picking up the package and then acting all crazy like, ah, glitter. Well, did they know that it was a fake package? Or, did yes. they, or were they just like, hey, steal this package and see what happens? See, I don't know. But I'm glad that you brought that up because this was my point with it. You want to play test? No. Like, it's reality television. Yeah. Like, like, like th- there can be an agreement, like, on reality television in general. Right. And I've seen this casting process many times. It, it is what you call soft casting. So, for example, this was a pilot that I was working on with Andrew Maine. The trick we were going to do was we were going to have somebody's car disappear, right? And it was going to be at their car for sure. And so they brought in a bunch of people, and in reality TV, you're casting to see whether or not they're going to react big. Mm -hmm. So you talk to them for a little bit. You tell them, you know, know, okay, well, well, what do you mean? This could be a big thing. It could be on TV. You see whether or not they get excited about it. You see whether or not... Uh, uh, they are somebody that will get revved up or whether or not they're just kind of dead to the camera. Right. And then you cast them. You say, congratulations, you're going to be on the show. But you don't tell them it's a magic show. All right. You okay. just say, hey, yeah. we're casting for a TV show. It's important that you're surprised by it. So we're just going to let you know where you need to be, how much you're going to get paid. We'll go from there. Yeah. So then you keep them in a waiting zone. This is how we did it. All right. Keep them in a waiting area. And then you say, shit. Turns out, sorry, shooting went long. We need you guys to be at another location. Can you go to your car and uh, uh, just drive over to this other location? And they're like, all right, cool, man. Like, I'm getting paid no matter what. Right. So let me go get in my car. And then when they got to their car, they would. that's where the actual set was. So they would be surprised when a stranger walked up to them and asked them to... Uh, uh, Asked him, like, you know, to set up the trick uh, uh, as our hidden cameras are, like, shooting all the action. Right. Basically. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so they don't know what's happening. Right. They don't know that it's a trick. They are blindsided by it. They react honestly. The only thing that you are ensuring is their is, reaction is interesting. Or, no, that they're there. <laughs> like that's the biggest thing. If let's say for that dude, he went for six months and built that. Right. And while the package thieving thing is at its highest, right? Right. He's just gonna gamble that someone's gonna take his package. Oh, I see what you're saying. You gotta make sure that someone's gonna take the package. Yeah. They cannot know what's in it. You can you can make that. I mean, if it's a YouTube video, it can be as nefarious as you want because you're you're just a dude, right? Right? You don't you're not a production company with a with a reputation, uh, but it's like it's it's so ridiculous because this guy had to eat so much shit. This Mark Rober guy, yeah, he built an amazing robot for six months. He created a video that people loved, right? Right, and then because. It wasn't a a, 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 a a actual documentary. People are like, oh, well, it's ruined. This is disgusting. Right. You know, uh, oh, I, I saw one one friend of mine was like, oh, this is this is how people are losing faith in media. Like, uh, this is an example of why fake news has gotten out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Rober, the uh, the vandalism journalist. Famed, 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 famed It's like, well, if, if we can't trust a YouTube prank video, then what on earth can we <laughs> is trust? Is anything sacred? Oh, this is this is the future liberals want. Uh, <laughs> All right, yeah, I, I see that. But but I I just so uh, I guess you are on my side then. Yeah, I'm on you. I'm on I'm on the side that it's like you know what most of it like if if everything that that we saw in that video was also authentic right 
And like, yeah, yeah, yeah you, you. I mean, he says he says that everything in there is authentic. He, he, he says that everything that was left in the video. Right. Was an actual thief. Yeah. Picking stuff off his porch. That being said, by the way. There was a lot there of people. There was a lot of people picking I mean, stuff up. I mean, come on. How porch. fucking. It looks like his neighborhood is decent. Yeah. <laughs> like, it didn't look like a total pile of shit. I mean, who knows, right? I, I, as, like, you just don't get, just don't get your packages dropped off anymore in front of your house. Like, I'm not surprised that, like, multiple. Well, I guess I did comment on him, like, wow, he got several people to do yeah. that. Uh, but I, I mean, in the certain neighborhoods, I bet it's a fairly common thing. You know, there's a yeah. re- there's a reason why he created the video in the first place. Um, I thought that your point was going to be more like, let's get someone we know to like open the package in case like in case there is no reaction. Right. In case like like we built we put all this work into like designing the glitter thing and like we want to make sure that it records everything right. But like maybe that there's something that we didn't think about in the way that people open the box or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that it won't be right because he put like there was a lot of thought even in the even in just like all right we need to get the videos back how do we get the videos back we have we, have to, we do all of this stuff so he seems like the kind of person who would be fairly rigorous testing every single part of it yeah uh, including what happens when someone picks it up off the porch and goes and opens it somewhere like even if it's someone you know um, I thought that was that was gonna when you first started talking. I thought that was gonna be more your point, but even then, like, why not use that footage if it's funny? Yeah, because he's just trying to make a funny thing. You laugh at it, and then you subscribe. Because well, that sometimes it's like there is a, a betrayal in what you created. Right, is not honest. Like you know that 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 there's a stooge for a magic trick that. The the uh, comedy routine has canned laughter, and, and there is right. there is a reaction that we have to that. And I guess on that level, yeah, he definitely said these are things being stolen off a porch, right? Uh, and I'm gonna get them, yeah. But I don't know. It's a prank video. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's not like he had a fucking hand buzzer. Like he built an amazing machine. Yeah. No matter what, that True. machine rules. Kickstart it. Kickstart I want one. All right, let's go ahead and get into your emails. Uh, we are still going through 2018's emails because uh, we are just starting up the uh, the podcast again for the new year after a little bit of a break. So we will go back to this. John, there was a story that we had a couple weeks ago about a young boy who performed at a drag show uh, at a gay bar uh, in New York City, I believe. And All right. so uh, I... I posited the thing that, you know, I think the bigger issue with something like that isn't necessarily the kid performing in the drag show. Yeah, what is the issue? Uh, well, it, it became a scandal. Okay, because uh, he for, was too for, young? For some people, it's too young. Uh, drag is a sexualized art form. Uh, uh, he's in a gay bar. How like young are we talking? Five, I believe. Oh, okay. Or, young. Yeah, somebody uh, actually, somebody, somebody uh, correct me on the age of the original kid. But we did get a great email here from Phil. I'm just making sure that it wasn't anonymous. Uh, so I have some experience with the subject of, of kids who want to perform drag. My kid went through this a few years ago. It's a topic that I've found reveals way more about the people who I talk to about it than it probably does about us. Anyway, when my son was about 10 or 11, he became enthralled by drag queens. Who wouldn't? They were sparkly, glamorous, and the center of attention. For him, there was nothing sexual about it. He also did not see uh, at the time, he did not at the time see it as transgressive. He was a kid who loved dressing up and entertaining people, and for him, drag queens were simply the most extreme example of what he enjoyed doing. We happen to have a Hamburger Mary's in town, which for those who aren't familiar is a restaurant chain which has a nightly drag act. It's not really in the vein of a restaurant or a Jackrabbit Slims, as the wait staff is not themed or on display. The shows are on stage uh, and normal as these things go. But they have a PG-13 version during Sunday brunch, so that's when we would take the kids. Uh, we would go now and then, and eventually the queen started really having, a, uh, having fun with the kid and letting him try out makeup and accessories, and somehow we all ended up deciding that he could be in a show for his birthday. The kid got to get a makeover that was more Ziggy Stardust than Judy Garland, wear a crazy wig, jump around lip-syncing to Owl City. 
It wasn't the least bit seedy, and a lot of people cried because that's what people do. The next year, he wanted to do it again, so he did. Uh, then he got other hobbies because he's a kid and he doesn't stick with anything. So, when we tell people the short version of this story, it's usually for the shock value, and inevitably, people bring in their own internal ideas about drag to it. For people who see it as entertainment, it's one thing. For people who fetishize it, it's another. It's also a red versus blue uh, and all that baggage. The reality is that we let our kids dress, dress like a 70s glam rocker and jump around on stage at a burger joint. So I guess what I'm saying is I don't know anymore. What am I saying? Don't jump to conclusions. I doubt I would have let him do the act at a local gay bar, by the way, but only because I used to drink there and it would be weird. So, so yeah, I guess how is it different than like child beauty pageants? I mean, it's not. Yeah. I guess the uh, child beauty pageants at least make uh, 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 <laughs> pedophiles go to a hotel ballroom. <laughs> Uh, not to say that, you know, there are uh, only pedophiles at gay bars, but uh, uh, there is certainly an element of there being a neutral third, like a a, a, a a location where it's, this is only for a beauty pageant, for whatever that means, right? Rather, a this gay is bar, a gay bar, a gay which bar, already is a controversial topic. Well, whether or not it's controversial, right, let's understand that it's a place where people go to oftentimes meet and form romantic relationships, if not sexual ones, right? Right. In the same way that a, you know, a, a, a pickup bar, as they used to be called, would have been that for a heterosexual couple. Hmm. This is a, like or a ladies' night or something, that there is a, a theme to that establishment. Now, that being said, I'm projecting that onto gay bars, uh, uh, because I, I, I am not well-versed as... <laughs> I've been to far more ladies' nights than I have been to gay bars. <laughs> uh, but that, I think, would be... That, to me, was the only thing that I would agree with as, as a red flag of, like, eh. But then again, also, the other side is how many places have drag acts? Normally, drag acts are either at drag clubs or gay bars. And most drag clubs are fairly gay-friendly, <laughs> if not explicitly so. Except for apparently this fucking burger joint. I didn't even know that that burger joint existed. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Uh. Uh, uh, Jane says, really, no one under 21 should be at any bar. Yeah, I mean, I guess that that's really was more my default. My default was more more along the, the lines of like, well, there's a reason why bars are under 21. Right, but I guess there can or be over twenty. Like there are there are bars that let underage people in, and or I guess it's not a bar then; it's like some other venue that also serves. Hey, a it's a restaurant, alcohol. right? Like you know, you can have a restaurant with a gigantic bar in it, and the kids mm-hmm. allowed in. Or now, like breweries and uh, outdoor bars. I guess I think there's maybe like a difference between an outdoor setting, like a beer garden, and a bar for some reason. Right, is like different laws. Excuse me. If you if you brought your kid to a beer garden, then God can rain on you. <laughs> God can show his own judgment. He needs not man. Oh God. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up for today's edition of the Jury Daily Podcast. I want to remind everybody that you can always go ahead and email into the show jurydaily at gmail dot com. Again, that is jurydaily at gmail.com before we do the uh the, all, all the wrap-up stuff john we've made uh two games and many expansions or wait how many games three what's the other one who does nobody like oh shit yeah we yeah did. way of a big big throw back there big throw Deep back. cuts so we have we have made now uh, uh three games you can get all of them uh wherever you'd like uh, the contender the game of presidential debate you can get it at the contender.us Action News, you can get at actionnewsgame.com. By the way, uh, we are are rapidly getting to the end of our uh, oh, yeah. Action News. Action News, Action News stock is tight. If you want that, if you want that anytime soon. I think it is out at Amazon. I think yeah, we just sold out on Amazon uh, yesterday. So, that means the only place you can get it is actionnewsgame.com. Uh, uh, if it does show up on Amazon, I'll guarantee you It'll be very brief because, like, I know how many units we actually have. Unlike Contender, which we ordered so many, I just, <laughs> I just, I'm like, like how we many? always have more. It's the everlasting well of Contender. Exactly. <laughs> it's like whenever there was like questions, like, oh, how many do we have? Infinity. Yeah. Like as far as I know, it it is it is uh, an unknowable Too number. Too many to think about, really. Yeah. 
But unlike that, we know exactly how many we have of Action News, and it ain't much. Well, that's also why we didn't notice when we actually sold out of (laughs) Contenders on Amazon. Yeah, we did. Sorry if people tried to buy it over the holiday season. It briefly (laughs) sold out because we're fucking selling so well. Uh, But go ahead and pick that up, and uh, uh, I think it's safe to say that we have a lot of fun stuff in the offing. Yeah, really big news. Spent uh, the the morning or, or before we went live here mapping everything out. So uh, go ahead and uh, and and check it out. Oh, head to thecontender.us and sign up for our mailing list. That's a good that's a good thing to do, and uh, mm-hmm. you can know when all the new shit is upon you. All right, folks, I would like to remind you that you can always send your emails into pay or sorry. <laughs> You can always help us at payjurydaily.com. You want to know what? I told you guys I was going to do it. I told you guys I was going to do it. Congratulations. This is the first time I'm doing it. That was clunky. I'm going to do it again. I'm trying to be better at this. I, I'm, I'm just going to go back. Jurydaily at gmail.com. Again, that is jurydaily at gmail. Dot com, aim dot com. Uh, uh, if it does show up on Amazon, let's have more because we're fucking selling. I think it's safe to say we yeah. out. So go ahead and uh, and and check it out. Oh, head to thecontender.us and sign up for our mailing list. That's a good. That's a good thing to do, and uh, mm-hmm. you can know when all the new shit is upon you. There we go. Oh, I can say anything I want right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to say? Any- no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. Cool. All right. And now the thing that I was struggling on was because I had not pulled up my Jerry Daily doc. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, we're going to have a hell of a high thoughts on Thursday because y'all have been fucking getting high as shit over these holiday seasons. We got a lot of them. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and thank our producers, the Gen PD Rave, non-specific rock and roll Martian Joe Acosta. Well, Redneck Tech James, the OG Brito. Well, and Matthew Bitt. If you would like to sign up for our stickers or DIAF mailing list, you can do that at bit.ly slash stickers or DIAF. You can email me, jurydaily at gmail.com. You can support the podcast by going to payjurydaily.com. Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, at Justin R. Young. And, of course, keep the party going all night long by joining the bit.ly slash jury discord train. Folks, it's Discord. It's great. You can talk to all your friends all the time. Great community on there. Thank you, thank you, thank you for doing that. This is where I found this uh, article because I had kind of forgotten about it. I was going through old Jury Daily uh, story suggestions, and that was in there. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who did that. Bit.ly slash Jury Discord. That about wraps it up for us today. Until next time. This is your old pal, Justin Robert Young, for John Teasdale, suggesting that you please give a round of applause to Mr. Wacky, and more importantly, please, no, no! Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>